Okay. Okay. So, I'll go with you. Welcome back to our colleague. Let's start the organization with an overview of the data mobilization challenge. Let me start with the short overview of existing data sets. As Rafa already mentioned in the morning, that we have a couple of data sets by function recognition already. But for detection, there are Compared with the recognition of classification problem for detection or localization, we have much fewer number of data sets. Or maybe a few well known ones is this year. One of them is uh, drinking and smoking from the area and developed in 2007, and also the use of spots, which, which has been widely used with nine classes, 200 videos in the year 2008. And after that, you see 11, with 11 classes and more than 1,000 clips. Also, there are some other data sets like Oxford TV Interaction with four classes and 300 clips, and also a few more from Microsoft Research, and also the CMU. So, and the localization challenge data set used here, in, this year in this uh, action recognition workshop as a competition, contains 24 action classes from UCF 101 with over 3,000 clips. So, these are 12 knowledge. Uh, probably among the largest uh, in this, uh, for, for this problem. And there are three training types of these. So for each action, as you know, in the UCF 101, there are 25 group clips. So we use 18 of them for training and seven for testing. So, and, and we use three training types of these to switch those uh, videos from training and testing. And uh, for those 24 action classes, actually 10 of them were selected from UCF 11. Which has actually a part of what you say 101, and before that, I have 80, 14 more classes, which contains around uh, 1800 clips. So, for these 14 classes, we hire 8 people, which spend about 40 hours or about one, one week of the work full time to, to finish the annotation. And these are the class names of uh, those 24 action classes. Just a quick look, I'll show you some examples later. <laughs> And uh, to, uh, to annotate those uh, videos uh, frame by frame to annotate those actors, it, it wasn't a very easy problem, so we used the annotation tool from the uh, University of Maryland called Wiper. And this is a software I think you can easily use to annotate those people frame by frame you know, to, across the entire video. And uh, we also noticed some other alternative annotation tools recently, which might be better choice for our future extension of uh, the data set. One of them is called VATIC, developed by the University of California government and uh, also MIT. And the, I think the biggest advantage of this tool over Viper, the one from Maryland, is that this tool supports linear manipulation of the bounding boxes to allow more efficient annotation over time. So they can add a very few number of uh, frames and uh, the, the, the tool will automatically generate some interpolated bounding boxes. And the, the, the wiper tool allows you to copy the bounding boxes of the bunch of frames, but it does not do the interpolation. And uh, you also notice that right in this conference, there is another uh, paper. Uh, they tried to annotate those uh, body joints by extending those vectic the software. So their extension allows you to easily annotate body, body, body joints and visibility, and also the camera viewpoint. So there, I was told by the authors that their software, their extension part will be available publicly, so this may, may be also considered in our future uh, annotation of this uh, uh, data set for this challenge. And just a bit more statistics of the data set, and this is the number of uh, clips per class, the 24 classes used in the detection challenge. So on uh, average there are 120 clips per class, and uh, this figure shows the clip duration for those uh, 24 classes, and it overlaps a little bit with uh, the information given by Jing this morning. So the, these are the, uh, for, the, for some of the classes like soccer juggling, it's, uh, it's a bit longer, around 10 seconds, and some of them are really sharp, like basketball dunk, just two seconds, a bit over two seconds. Two seconds. And uh, this figure sh probably shows more the information. This is the action duration per class, the percentage of the real action happening within the entire video clip in the data set. So for some quite quite a number of the actions within the 24 uh, subset, 
for the detection charge. Uh, this uh, action actually happens from the beginning all the way to the end. So that, that means the localization you are, you, will, you, you are doing will be basically the spatial localization that has been no need to do any temporal localization. localization. And also for some of the classes, a possible shooting is very sharp, just 30 or 40 percent temporary uh, the duration. And, and this figure shows the number of uh, annotated subjects for uh, for clip, uh, so, uh, for action, sorry. And, and for example, for this uh, first basketball shooting, that means uh, around 50% of the clips, we only annotated one, uh, act, one actor, one, one figure. Uh, and uh, for some other clips, we annotated maybe two or three. Sometimes we annotated an uh, actor which who actually did not take this basketball shooting action just you know, without passing around, but we can say this uh, with a different, uh, uh, like different color. I'll show you later. We we have those uh, indicator in the application file that you know who's doing this uh, real action. We'll just show you some examples to to let you to understand better the difficulties of uh, doing this annotation. And besides those uh, time-consuming, uh, uh, you know, you need to annotate every frame. There are also some uh, different kind of uh, problem that we, we faced. For example, collusion, and this one. Sometimes we need to guess the very first human body because it's uh, occluded. And also mirror. We only annotate the real ones. So if your detection is on the for the other pair, and another example. And there are some also some other problem like equipment or the object that the actor is using. Sometimes it's too large and invisible, so we did not annotate them. And this is skateboarding. And also long-term actions. Some of the actions last for very long time. So, for example, it runs the actor runs for a very long distance. And then so, why are we going to relate like this different from the Uh, sorry, I, I forgot to explain. The the red color means we have indicator in the annotation file. The red color means this is not the, the action, just the annotation of a of actor, but the action. It's already the end of the action. So that means that, you know, the green color means that the action happening. And this the part of the action is uh, from the beginning to you know, that jobs. So you use the part is just the green that you can remove it. Ah, yes, yes. But you know, this allows people to decide which part to use. They can use longer uh, delivery of the actor. And just some more examples. So these are for basketball shooting and basketball time. You see, for basketball, we annotate more, more, action, more people when, when the ball passing around, but the real action only happens when the green color shows up. And uh, a few more examples for the other two classes. I'll show you more examples. So, back in time.
probably have seen the first video already. This one is it's another problem. We don't we're not sure whether or not we should have the cost of ours. So <laughs> it might be useful, so it's typical to decide. In the end we decided to just end the the, the the people. So I Example boundaries that were updated by one person or by many people? By many people, I mean. Okay. You know, we might have the entire class or a few of the agents, but we did the other leaders. Can you say something about the agreements? Because I mentioned especially temporal boundaries are very, not very well defined. So if people agree on that, it's very temporal. I mean, we discussed this in the early, at least there's an internal agreement, but I'm not sure whether or not I could look at the agreements. Just a few more examples in for every classes. and attach every features and we also share some class level attributes. Uh, these are a few examples like body motion, fleeting spinning, body parts visible, how to be the other scene, and body part of variation, this kind of uh, attribute features. But we did not notice and team used this uh, attribute feature in this recognition challenge. Alright, and for evaluation measure, we decided to use the traditional intersection or union criteria, which means the detection is correct if, uh, firstly, your actual label is correct, and then you are only about the overlap criteria is larger than 0.2, just following some existing papers, and then we can plot ROC curves of your detection, and uh, we use AOC area under curve as a single value measure. And the number of localization submissions we received this year was zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a lot of submissions to the, to the class grading challenge. I think maybe one of the reasons detection is uh, quite time consuming and we, we had a deadline completing the CVPR. That might be one of the reasons. <laughs> okay, just to show you some example results, we had some uh, baseline algorithms running. So, uh, but the 
the approach is then published. So I'm just showing some example results from this approach. These are the successful cases, detection results for some of the actions. Pretty good for the uh, samples, and uh, a few more successful cases. Surfing is really difficult. <coughs> And some failure pitches. This may be useful for you to develop a better algorithm. Mm -hmm. So clutter, inclusion. So th these are the, uh, the reasons that we identify as the most possible reasons to cause this failure cases, but this may not be the, the only reason. So occlusion, this example, and uh, so this example. Low contrast. Moving camera, very fast. And partial visibility. Tolerance rapid motion. Shape changes and consuming camera. Again, these are the, the reasons that we thought might be the most important reason to cause a failure case, but may not be the, the right reason or the only reason. How okay, so this is the end of those examples, and uh, uh, I'll conclude with uh, some quantitative results, but it's not, um, not right on this, uh, this year's challenge day, uh, the 24 classes, but on the smaller. We see a sports data set. So, there's a method recently from CVPR uh, which extends the the deformable practice model to the 3D domain, spatial temporal domain. So, so a spatial temporal deformable practice space model is their idea. It's, they, their approach. This is just a frame, but their approach actually works works in 3D. And uh, these are the results for those. Uh, uh, action classes from the UCL sports. And if uh, you look at the, maybe this uh, legend blocks some of the lines, but if you look at the, the overlap threshold at 0 0.3, for some of the classes, the OC could be as, as high as 0 0.6. But for many of the classes, just 0 0.3 or even lower. So that <coughs> reflects the difficulties of the data set. The UCF, uh, uh, these 24 classes should be much more difficult to, than this UCF sports. So we can imagine how difficult the task is. And next year, we will organize another uh, workshop uh, on this challenge and make sure you will submit some localization results in addition to the recognition results. All right, thanks. Some people in the audience requested that we make the summary slides for these for the detection recognition available. And I think we can do that, right? And put it on the website. Yeah. So if anyone else is curious, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, any questions for this other decision challenge? Yeah, so you made a lot of decisions in the ground proof. Have you documented all those decisions? Uh, no, not really, not all of them. But for sure we can you know, make our documents as, as most as possible. That's, that's a good plan. Uh, to, to mention those uh, decisions made during the animation process, all these things better now we have the double the cost. For the evaluation, so you mentioned zero two. Zero to all up, is it just in space, or how do you measure the space and time? 
uh, space and time is the, the water. Okay, so you, you want to track, detect the track and the track of the water. Basically, you can evaluate this uh, over every frame and then as a combination of the water. So did anyone try another segment of the So what's the plan? What's the plan? Do you plan? Okay, if there's no questions, so we'll switch to the next slide talk. And the next talk will be given by Professor Jian Xin Wu from Nanjing University. The title of his talk is uh, From Image to Video Encoding for Action Recognition. He's also among as the top, top performers of the recognition task. Join me to welcome. Yes, sir.